Hey guys, Kaylin at Elbow Mill Farm, and today I'm doing a Dermistead Beetle Colony. Um, these are flesh-eating beetles. They just came in the mail. Um, I actually ordered these guys from Rainbow Millworms, and I'll put a link down in the description um, for the exact ones I ordered. I ordered these to clean my skulls and bones and stuff like that. If you have a homestead, you kind of do a whole bunch of homestead hustles. Um, you're always looking for ways to save money or to use things that are actually waste and turn them into money. And there are a lot of people who do crafty stuff with bones. Um, I might attempt to do some crafty things with bones, but it will let me use when an animal has been eaten or when it's just out of natural causes or whatever. I can actually put them in one of these colonies and let the larva clean up the bones for me. And that way, right now if you would walk around the farm, we've got skulls kind of hanging out of trees. Um, I've got a bear skull sitting in a flower pot that I found on the side of the road. So it kind of gets a little gross. So I'm hoping to get a couple of these colonies set up and going. That way, um, from now on, I don't have to have skulls hanging everywhere because it, it does creep people out a little bit when they walk around the farm and there's just a deer head hanging from a tree, you know, while nature's taking off all the flesh and everything. Um, I didn't order these from a taxidermy place. I actually ordered these from like a reptile feeding place. And a lot of the taxidermy places recommended you get full colonies, you know, beetles, larva, pupa, the whole thing. Um, it was substantially cheaper to just order the larva. So I went ahead and ordered these guys. And what I'm going to do is in about a month to two months, I'm going to make another order and then do it again um, a couple months after that. And that way I'll have them in different stages. And by the time the first ones are turning into beetles, you know, I'll be getting another batch and everything. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get these guys set up, and I'm doing this outside because my husband will kill me if I let these loose in the house and they get to any of our deer or anything going on in the house, you know. So let me get the camera moved and situated on the tank, and I'll show you how to set them up. Okay, these are the Dermistead larvae, and you can see they came in bedding. Um, there was a beetle crawling around in here already. I'm not seeing him right now. Um, but these are the larvae, and you can see some of them are big. There's some teeny tiny little guys in there, and you can see um, little bits of dog food. I put that in there um, just to give them something to eat while I was getting everything set up. I'm actually going to start them on dog food just for a few days just to get an idea of how much they'll eat. Um, I don't want to put, you know, like a mouse in here or something and them not be able to strip it quick enough and it mold and make a mess and, you know, just make things gross. Um, because they kind of, they're not supposed to stink. Um, they do have a weird smell, but like my millworms have a weird smell too. Um, but it's not like a rotten smell, it's just kind of a, a weird bug smell. But yeah, these are them, and I still don't see that beetle in there, but there was one. Um, so I'm going to set them aside and get the tank ready for them. Okay, this is the tank. Um, I actually got this for free from a friend. I just put a shout out on Facebook that I needed an old tank if anybody was getting rid of one. And my friend Rihanna hollered at me. And it's actually a really nice tank, so I kind of hate to use it for them. Like, it's got the nice little opening doors on the front. And it's got the screen top. And the screen top is actually going to come in handy um, to keep other bugs out. Not so much to keep them in. They don't tend to fly unless... Everything says about 80 degrees is when they'll start to fly and that if they actually have food, they usually won't even then. Um, so I just got to make sure I keep them fed. But so I'm starting in this tank. I have a couple other tanks I can try if I feel like this one's not working. Um, but we're going to go with this one. And first things first is you've got to put some pine shavings in the bottom. Do not use cedar. It's not good for them. Um, I just got this at Tractor Supply. And I went with the flake instead of the, or I mean the fine instead of the flake, um, just to make it a little easier for them to burrow in. Um, you want about, about half an inch to start with. And that's probably a little thicker than that, but it's kind of hard to do on my tippy toes. Okay, we're going to start with that. Okay, so spread that out, and that's definitely more than I should have started with, but it'll be fine. Um, the other thing is a piece of styrofoam, and this I'm actually kind of excited about this. Um, everything I've read says that 
they like to burrow in this to pupate and that kind of thing. And we order a lot of weird stuff that has styrofoam and I hate just throwing it away and I don't really have anywhere to recycle it. And so what happens is they burrow into this and they kind of eat it. And if I was eating them, that would concern me, but I'm not. I'm literally just using them to eat meat off of bones. Um, so I kind of don't care what they eat. And this lets me get a use out of some old styrofoam. So this just came in, I don't even know what we bought that this was in, but I've got a whole stack of this. Um, you just set that in there. And then you need a sponge, and this is for their water. And this is just a regular old sponge. Make sure it has no cleaners on it, no, you know, no chemicals. It's just a plain sponge and a spray bottle. And it says not to over soak this. Like you want it wet enough for them to be able to drink out of it, but like it, you don't want it soaking wet. Okay, there's that. So I'm going to set that down on the styrofoam and then I'm just going to take my lovely larva and I'm actually going to dump them on top of the styrofoam and you can see how many are in that. This is exactly why I ordered from this company. Um, some of the companies, there just weren't a whole bunch. Um, this was, I can't remember how many, but it was like, I want to say a thousand in this for the same price that I would have paid like for 300 beetles I got a thousand larva and the larva do most of the work so starting with the larva you know that's fine for me um, this stuff at the bottom of the cup that stuff's called frass and it's you know it's where they've broken down the bedding they're in dry food um, it's poop it's all that kind of stuff and that's kind of what has the smell and that's the same in the millworms the millworms the longer it goes the more of a smell it gets and it's just that powdery nastiness in the bottom and it's it's just a weird smell it's not really a rotten smell it's not really a gross smell it's just an odd smell um but there will also be eggs down in that um you know from the adult beetles laying eggs um, i'm gonna dump the rest of everybody else out i'm gonna get all the powder out of the bottom since there could be eggs in that and I can hear them all already crawling like through the bedding and everything. And you can see them coming up onto the sponge to get stuff to drink. And then the other thing I'm going to add, like I said, I'm going to start them on just dog food. This is actually Apollo's food. It's grain free, gluten free, all that kind of stuff. It's really ugly, but it's good for his allergies. Um, I'm just gonna put some of this in. This is a small mason jar. After I see how quickly they can eat this, I've actually got a couple dead mice in the freezer. I've got a whole bunch of rabbit skulls, but I wanna know how quickly they can eat something before I go putting, you know, stuff in here for them to eat because this is going in my garage. Um, not the garage where we park our cars or anything, um, but like the critter room garage. And so anytime I can cut down on smells, I want to do that. And if they couldn't clean a skull quick enough, that would eventually smell really nasty and gross. Um, so we're just going to start with dry dog food. And that is one of the things, if you don't have enough um, bones for them to clean, you can feed them actual meat. You can feed them um, dry dog food, cat food, that kind of thing. Um, so that'll get you through, you know, pinch. I say luckily, but you know, here with between the cats and you know, just regular predators and stuff like that, we actually end up with a lot of extra stuff besides just what I butcher. So I don't think I'll ever actually have a problem having something to feed them, but just in case, this is always good to know. So I'm just going to sprinkle this around carefully, trying not to squish any of them. And I'm actually going to spray a little bit more. That just doesn't feel very damp. Okay, and that's all I'm going to do to get these guys started. Um, next video with these guys will probably be me adding more larvae after these guys start to, you know, grow up a little bit. And probably a video showing, like I said, I have a mouse that I want to do first just because it'll be small. 
Um, and I feel like that'll give me a good idea of how quickly they can do something kind of messy. Because like with a skull, I'm going to peel most of that skin off. And they're just going to eat the stuff that I left. But, you know, with a mouse, it's, it's going to be the whole body I'm sticking in there. So that'll give me a good idea of, you know, how quickly they can do stuff. But, yeah, that's all you've got to do to get them set up. And, you know, it lets me turn something that would normally be waste. I mean, normally, normally rabbit heads, we actually feed them to the dogs, which isn't really waste. But... You know, I have a lot of rabbits, and the dogs can only eat so many rabbit heads. And this gives me something else to do with them, because then once the skulls are clean, they can be prettied up, and people can use them for crafts. Um, you know, do interesting things with them. So, so we'll see how this goes, and I'll do another video in maybe a month, and see how much the colony's grown. But I hope you guys liked this. I hope you weren't too creeped out by the creepy crawlies, and let me know if you have your own colony, and how quickly they can clean you know a skull because i really i'm just learning and i've read as much as i can but everything you know it's kind of everybody says something different and so i'm just not real sure how quickly you know these guys are going to be able to clean something for me or if i'm going to have to wait till everybody turn in this batch turns into beetles and starts laying more and i get my next batch you know just how quickly are these guys going to be able to clean up a skull for me but thanks for stopping by guys and talk to you guys later